Hello and welcome to In the Know. I'm Mark Crosby of Quincy Access Television. Thank you for joining us. In the Know is a program that basically helps you to stay informed. Joining me today is the Norfolk County Sheriff. That would be Sheriff Patrick McDermott. And uh, we will be talking about all things Norfolk County Sheriff <laughs> related, I suppose. And uh, it's great, of course, to have you back. We should mention, uh, Sheriff, that this program does air throughout Norfolk County. Which is great. Yeah, I, love, uh, I love the opportunity to come in on a monthly basis and kind of share of some of the things that we've been doing at the Sheriff's Office, things uh, that are coming up. And uh, the summer has uh, not slowed us down one bit. Despite the heat, despite all the activities, we've stayed pretty busy all summer long. I can tell that just by looking at my notes. <laughs> Uh, we're going to start by uh, talking about uh, career opportunities at uh, the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, well, mo most people think, you know, when, when they think about the Sheriff's Office, people think of uh, the men and women in uniform, you know, our corrections officers, our deputy sheriffs, uh, which are the bulk of our, our, our workforce, and we're always hiring for top talented people, diverse uh, backgrounds, talents uh, to come and work as our correctional staff. Uh, but we're also looking for people to, to serve as teachers, uh, caseworkers, nurses, uh, healthcare professionals, mental health clinicians, uh, and IT professionals. In fact, and that's one of the things we're here now, we're, we're promoting. Uh, we're hiring a uh, director of IT. Uh, one of the first things that I've done uh, as the sheriff is to make sure that we have the most modern facility as far as I'm concerned in the country. Uh, so we invest heavily in our technologies, and a lot of the things that we do now are all online. Uh, we're investing in employment software. We're going to have a sheriff's app that's going to be launched hopefully this fall. Um, we're currently uh, redoing all of our, uh, our regulations that we have and, and on a system called Power DMS. Our offender management system is being updated, so the director of IT really needs to be a top-notch professional. Uh, and the tough thing about hiring a director of IT is you know we're a public agency so you know the salary is is tough to be competitive in the private sector you can make a lot of money as, a, as an IT director uh, we hope that somebody who, who is interested in public service will come in uh, we pay about up to hundred and twenty thousand dollars for it it's uh, but it's the value that you're providing the public so I'm looking for that that unique person who has public service in their blood and they, uh, they want to come and give back, and they can bring their professional uh, uh, educational uh, system right to us. So we're hoping for the best and the brightest, and uh, we're looking forward to some of those resumes coming in the door. Very good. Well, we did have that uh, graphic on the screen uh, for folks, and um, also we had that uh, code that you can scan. Yeah, the QR code, which is another new way of technology. It's an easy way for somebody to just take out their phone. If they watch this program, they can just zoom right in on that, and that'll bring up the, uh, the application page. And, we want to have people uh, apply online, and uh, we'll get back to them right away. An important <laughs> position, too, because, of course, cyber attacks. Yeah, but si and that's the big thing, too. There's we, uh, our prior director of IT uh, would report to us weekly on the amount of uh, attempts to, to get through into our system, and it, it, it happens. So you have to have the best firewalls set up. And it can be frustrating because I also get calls from friends of mine who can't email me. Uh, they're like, I tried to send you an email, I got rejected. Am I on some kind of bad list? I said, no, it's the, it's the, the firewall. So we had to make sure that we, uh, we are protected. And, you know, our, our entire facility is run on the computer system. So, you know, it's not like all the jailers walk around with keys. It's like everything is push button. So when you open a cell door, it's operated by the computer. Uh, so you need to make sure that the, the, our, our IT staff, our IT force is top notch. Good luck with the search. National Night Out. Yeah, National Night Out has been something that's going on for, for many, many years. I remember uh, partnering up with uh, then City Council Maureen Feeney across uh, the, uh, over in Dorchester, and we used to partner with Boston. And it was a, it's, a, it's a night to uh, celebrate law enforcement and the partnership that law enforcement has with the communities that, that we represent. And it's been going on for years. I remember coordinating that back in the 90s um, as a city councilor. And now as sheriff, I have the opportunity to kind of partner up with uh, local communities on their own national nights out and uh, uh, we've had some busy uh, busy events this summer and I wish I could go to them all uh, but there's 28 towns in Norfolk County not all of them do it but uh, we were able to participate in both Dedham uh, and in Brookline and uh, very very big turnouts uh, we were very happy uh, to, to meet the folks out uh, in their, those uh, representative communities, and uh, we hope to do many, 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 many more as we go forward. And folks can see some images on the screen, I believe, from Brookline. From Brookline, big turnout in Brookline. Uh, there was a couple, I think it was a couple of thousand people that walked through. 
Um, so it, it's really important for us uh, uh, to show that partnership that law enforcement has uh, in the community to make sure that, uh, that people feel safe. And they know that we're there uh, for them in partnership with the local police departments and the Brookline PD. They just uh, brought, uh, they're, they're bringing on a new chief, I think, in the next couple of months. And so it's a, like, exciting days in Brookline. With summer comes Summer Safety Fest. We've had a lot of fun this summer. With uh, We rolled out this year um, the Sheriff's Summer Safety Fests. And uh, we've had two so far. We, had, uh, uh, we kicked it off in the city of Quincy and um, moved up to the town of Wellesley. And our third and final summer event is going to be held in Sharon uh, on Saturday, August 20th from 10 to 2 at uh, the Crescent Ridge Farm in Sharon. And so we're really excited to partner up with uh, Chief Coffee. In, uh, I have coffee with coffee every now and then. So <laughs> Chief Coffee is, uh, is hosting us in Sharon, and we're really excited uh, to have just a lot of fun with family. We have bouncy house for the kids. We have you know, activities for the kids. We've got uh, some information for people. We have a, the best touch a truck for the kids to come. And it's just a nice family-friendly event, and we're looking forward to, to, uh, to, to finalizing this final, third and final summer event. Uh, but uh, as I normally do on these shows, I always announce things that the staff don't necessarily know about. But we're kicking off a fall safety event as well. We're going to be doing a couple this fall. I think we've, we've locked in at least a date in, in September. Uh, but we want to continue that rolling through the fall. These are very, very important events that, that give us an opportunity to once again connect with the community and just showcase some of the things, the resources that we have in the sheriff's office and what the local uh, police departments and the fire departments have to offer in their community. So. The Youth Leadership Academy, very successful, actually celebrated its 20th anniversary. Started 20 years ago under Sheriff uh, Mike Bellotti, and uh, we've uh, gone through 20 years of, uh, of uh, summers with, uh, with kids. Over, over 15,000 kids have gone through um, the, the Youth Leadership Camp over the years. Uh, we celebrated a, a 20th reunion uh, with some of our graduates, our camp counselors. Uh, we, we put a nice plaque on our Braintree campus. Um, that, that commemorates this, uh, this camp uh, when we, we're in the final week this week of, of this summer's camp. Um, the kids are having a ball. I, I go to every Friday to the, uh, to the graduation ceremonies um, and every week the kids are just beaming with you know, how, how much they enjoyed it. And you know, it's not just like a, just you go and we have our ropes course, and, but it's the valuable lessons that we're trying to teach these kids about leadership about making bold decisions, kind of stepping out of their comfort box. And that's te technically the, what the ropes course is all about. It's not you know, just swinging. You can go to tree trap adventures in Canton if you just want a day of fun. This is a, an opportunity for kids to, to break out of their comfort zone. And I witnessed on Friday, too, it was, it was kind of a, a really a beautiful moment. Uh, we had a young kid who was up on one of the high uh, ropes courses. And he was shedding a few tears. He was scared. And uh, we had both co counselors were up there with him. And we're kind of coaching him through it, kind of ex ex showing him exactly how safe it was. And um, he fought his way through the tears and through the encouragement. He did the zip line, jumped right through. And by the time that kid hit the ground, he put his arms up in the air as like a champion. He felt really empowered. So that's the kind of stuff that we want to teach. We want to empower these kids to, to think that they can, they can make those bold decisions. And, and we want those kids to go out. They get their T-shirt, and we send them a message. Wear that T-shirt with pride and go out there and teach your peers, some of the lessons you learned at the youth leadership camp. So, very nice. Uh, the support system, very nice. Yeah. Which which you or a child uses throughout life, really. Absolutely, no. and can be a support system for someone else. Yes, and that's what we teach. We want to make sure that they know that uh, that they're 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 a leader for their peers, and that the you know in terms of teamwork and good decision making. We're going to hit the wild side and uh, <laughs> talk about. Uh, well, that was kind of wild. Yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> that uh, I would say not the rope swing, but the ropes above the ground. That yes. was a pretty, that's a pretty high uh, position there. But let's talk about the New England Wildlife Graduation. Yes, New England Wildlife Center down in Weymouth. A uh, fantastic uh, organization that takes care of wild animals. And uh, they take care of raccoons, rabbits, falcons, ducks, turtles. Uh, it's an amazing facility down in Weymouth. I never knew it existed until I knew I found out about our partnership that we have. But they're also not just, you know, they're an animal hospital, uh, but they also teach individuals on how to take care of animals. So they work with kids a lot, they work with youth groups, but they also work with um, men and women who are incarcerated. And so we have a partnership that we send 
uh, men and women to the f to the facility. They they do a, a, a six week curriculum based upon how to uh, groom the animals, uh, how to do basic uh, basic care, uh, and then they graduate with a certificate in uh, in animal care, veterinary care, and this gives them not only the opportunity to, to realize they can do something once again outside of their comfort zone that they've never experienced before, but it gives them the realization that they actually can accomplish a task. And, and achieve something at the end. And so with that certificate, they can actually use that as a way to get a job, whether it's a, at a pet grooming uh, shop, at a zoo, uh, a whole host of things that they could do, or a veterinary clinic itself. And we're working, once again, partnering up with, with local uh, jobs, uh, local employers uh, who are willing to hire a formerly incarcerated individual. And we're hoping that our graduates of this program have that opportunity to get a job in that profession if they desire. Every, almost every episode, as we're looking at photos, I don't want to rush through the photos, uh, certainly um, a great, great program, great program to partner with. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the inmates, so I always try to uh, debrief with, with them uh, when they're finished with the program, when they graduate, and uh, the, the, uh, the individuals always indicate uh, that it gave them hope. It gave them something to look forward to. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to instill in them, that they, they can be more than what they were. Um, and and that, that even though they're, they, they come to us broken, um, we, we help them put themselves back together and give them a chance that we, they can do better when they leave. I even make uh, some career choices based on the experience they have. They yes, have. exactly. And something that they've never experienced before. You know, they, they, most of them have never thought about in a million years, well, I'm going to be a you know, vet, pet groomer. But they, they learn to enjoy it. And animals, as we all know, for those of us you know that are animal owners, and you know I'm a recent uh, you know dog owner, I've been a cat owner for years, but you know the the, the affection between an owner uh, and a pet, and certainly you know, that's the reason why people get into veterinary care is, uh, is the love of animals. But the animal gives the love back, so it's it's kind of something that some of these individuals have never experienced before. Every well, almost every program has a theme, and. Uh, this program, the theme is back to school. Back to school, it's amazing, you know, it's, but the summer flies, is, as soon as the 4th of July is over, it seems like the, the signs pop up about back to school shopping. I hate that. It's <laughs> awful. I was in Lowe's the other day down in Weymouth and they had Halloween decorations no. up. I'm like, my God, it's a little too early for that. Next thing you know, the Christmas trees will be up. But yeah, it is back to school. Um, you know, I, my, both of my kids, uh, we're in a little different ball game because they're back to school was going to college. So it's a little bit different. Uh, thing to it, but uh, you know, it, it it got me thinking about you know what education, the value of education is, and 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 we, uh, yeah, I believe in lifelong learning, and so when we talk about the kids going back to school, you know, they're they're matriculating through the various grades, and they'll get out of high school, graduate, hopefully go on, to possibly to go on to college, but it's also about lifetime learning. It's about going beyond. Um, where you are. We also invest, uh, back to school for the sheriff's office is pretty much every day. We invest heavily in education programs. It's part of our four pillars uh, in our mission of prevention, intervention, education, and hope. That education pillar really ties in with the, with the rest of the three because it, with, the, with the right education, um, you know, we, we, we believe that we're preventing, you know, people from entering criminal behavior. If you have the right education, the skills, uh, we're intervening uh, in people's lives to, to try to shock them into going in the right direction. And some of these educational programs that we offer at the Sheriff's Office, as I said, with the New England Wildlife Center, provides that hope. So that education piece is, is, is pretty big. We, we have a wide range of programs that we offer um, to, uh, to our uh, justice-involved individuals from college readiness programs to uh, employment preparation. And we're, we're really excited because we did receive a grant uh, to, to develop what's now being known as the employee program. And we're launching that um, right now as we speak, but more formally uh, with the back to school thing in, in September. Uh, and it highlights a whole host of topics for the employee program. Public speaking, the ability to actually get out and, and vocalize you know, what you want, uh, what you want as a career, uh, express themselves clearly, articulately, um, is a big, big opportunity. We do a job prep boot camp uh, for, for our uh, justice involved individuals it's designed to help the offenders develop a strong uh, job search with positive outcomes. That's the outcome that we're looking for. Uh, they learn to identify what skill sets they have, the strengths, some of their weaknesses that we can help plug the gaps in. Um, 
develop what, what core competencies they have and what ones they need to develop based on the, those, those transferable skills that we're trying to put to forth. Uh, we put together an employment portfolio for, the, for these uh, individuals, which is a six-week class, which helps them uh, build a portfolio of materials that they need to secure the employment. You know, simple things that we take for granted, but Social Security card, most of, most of, some of us lose our Social Security card, but you need it to, to get employment. So we, we uh, teach them how to get a replacement uh, card. Uh, how to get your birth certificate, uh, awards letters or certifications that you might have achieved while you're uh, with us or previously. Um, simple thing, how to fill out a job application, how to build out a resume. Um, we also do employment counseling, um, provide career counseling uh, and placement services where in fact your skills can be transferred into the, into the private sector. We've been blessed, uh, our director of reentry services and his team have put together a list of over 250 uh, quarry friendly uh, employers and those are employers willing to give a, a formerly incarcerated individual a chance at, a, at employment so we think that's really positive we don't uh, sometimes we don't have enough enough uh, uh, individuals to, to to go to those uh, 250 uh, uh, job opportunities so and the resume building is a big part of it that's another course that we offer and that's a six-week program that we teach them how to format how to put that resume together as well as the technology skills because a lot of times a paper resume doesn't even exist anymore so we want to try to get these folks to understand what LinkedIn is all about and get their resumes posted online and uh, finally we, we talk about entrepreneurship you know there's some very talented individuals that just for whatever reason have, you know took a negative path in life but there's they have brilliant ideas and uh, so there are some that will qualify for our entrepreneurship program uh, how to start a business themselves we actually have two former uh, formerly incarcerated individuals from Norfolk, uh, from, from our facility, uh, who are currently opening um, marijuana dispensaries. And, th and that's part of the, uh, the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, so small business Small owners. business owners uh, that are opening their own stores uh, and, and taking that spirit of entrepreneurship. Uh, so that's just, and that's just one, one kind of uh, uh, entrepreneur uh, track that people can go on. But it just shows that we can, um, that, that, that people can be successful on the outside. Uh, but it's not just about our, our, our uh, justice involved individuals, the inmates that we deal, our offenders. Um, I instill in our staff uh, in terms of learning too. I wanna make sure that our staff is, uh, they're always ready for in-house training that we do and you know, that there's mandatory trainings, but I also encourage folks if they find uh, conferences to attend or seminars or you know, even online learning, uh, I encourage all of our staff to, to try to continue to learn uh, as they go along to improve their own skills that, that helps them in their career. So uh, I do want to encourage our staff to do that consistently and I encourage everybody in the community to uh, it, take that lifelong learning uh, experience uh, to heart. It will only help you down the road whether it's your career or just your basic skills that you can develop. You know? So um, I believe it's important that the people know that education uh, really drives success. And, uh, and everybody should take part, take part in it. The uh, sheriff's office, or, or uh, simply, right, the office itself and the facilities that, um, it, that are involved in it have changed dramatically through the years. I think this whole education component has really stepped up. It really is, you know, we, I mean, we have minimum qualifications to, to kind of enter our workforce, which is fine, and, and actually, a uh, high school degree is, is what you need to get in, but the competitiveness now, I mean, we have people applying for jobs in our office, which is fantastic, with master's degrees, PhDs, uh, people are coming in from all diverse backgrounds, accountants, uh, teachers um, you know, that, that are coming in and want to work uh, in, in the corrections, public safety realm. So and it takes a high skill set. And so we, we want a diverse workforce. So I look, I want that unique, person and we have a lot of people that apply that criminal justice majors and that's great but I want to see somebody who might has a psychology degree you know it might have an advanced uh, skill set computer skills you know that might want to be either a corrections officer or work in our administration um, a diverse workforce um, makes for a successful operation and so we're looking for the best and the brightest and education is the key so if anybody's looking to get back into the game whether it's with us or anywhere Get onto it. Get it, and it's so easy access to you know, YouTube. Just get on YouTube and, and Google what, whatever you want to learn. There's free stuff out there all over the place, but you can develop your skill unbelievably. And then put it to good use. Absolutely. 
Let's talk about uh, some award recipients. Uh, we traditionally do that on almost every program. So part of our um, uh, part of our educational piece is I, I, I've sent uh, many of our officers to what's known as the FBI LIDA uh, uh, um, educational series. It's a three-part series. I'm actually I'm, I've I've completed two out of the three, and it's a supervisory leadership course, and then a command leadership course, and then finally the executive leadership course. So it's a three parts, three weeks, uh, spread out over the course of sometimes a year. Um, and when you complete all three, you get what's known as the FBI Trilogy Award. And it's a very prestigious award. Not everybody who starts the program finishes it, and some people take a long time to do it. But very proud that uh, two of our officers, Captain John Kilrain and Lieutenant uh, Bob Chagru, uh, recognized for their commitment and their ongoing training that they received at FBI LIDA. Um, and basically, they, they, uh, they, they, they took it upon themselves that they wanted to advance their own careers, and, and I encouraged it. And uh, I'm proud that those are our two latest officers who have received that award. Um, but they're not the only ones. We have, uh, we have several officers who have completed uh, the FBI trilogy. I've encouraged all of our command staff uh, to do it. Um, as I said, I'm going through it, so I don't, just, uh, I don't just preach about it. I actually do the work myself, so myself and my assistant deputy superintendent are finalizing our final trilogy. We're going to be down in Washington uh, at a conference, and that's we're going to do our final FBI uh, leadership uh, course there. And once I get mine, uh, I'll be very proud to display that. But I've encouraged all of our, our command staff to get it, because once we do that, the FBI leader program bestows upon your agency the agency trilogy which is a very prestigious award and I really would love to see our, our, our agency get it. Well, congratulations uh, to those two recipients and uh, nice work. Thank nice you. work. Uh, let's uh, end the program with the sheriff's book recommendation. So once again, you know, when I was a kid, I, I, I sure when you were a kid, most of us who were watching and when we were kids, we all had that dreaded summer reading list, right? So I, I brought it back a little bit. I, I, I kind of horrified the staff a little bit. Uh, but it's back. not dreaded anymore. It's is it? not dreaded. This is something you want to it invest in. You. It's it's a beautiful thing, you know. But uh, so at the beginning of the summer, uh, as we were coming in, um, you know, to our staff meeting, I had the I, I recommended to the staff that I, I was ho you know we're we're trying to build out the agency. We're trying to put together a nice five year plan. And I stumbled across a book several months ago called Good to Great uh, by Jim Collins. And it's a fascinating um, discussion uh, about how, you know, you can have a lot of good companies out there, good, uh, you know, good, good companies that have done wonderful things, but there's very few good companies that can take their good to great and to really establish themselves as part of the 1% of the top. Uh, businesses in the country. So Good to Great is all about how those, uh, the, some of these companies have established themselves as a truly great company. Now, none of this, and it, it's a lot of it, it's business related, but I've always tried to take a business perspective to uh, the administration of, in my public role, whether it prior to when I was at the courthouse, the probate and family court, I, pr I instilled a lot of business uh, concepts there. And we're trying to do the same thing in the sheriff's office as we build out our five-year plan. And how do we build it? We, we do have, I, I like to think we have a great agency, but when you start to peel back the, the layers, you realize, all right, we have some gaps that we have to, to fill. And this book, Good to Great, uh, to me, is, is, is a fine example of how we can take our good agency to a great level. And uh, the staff have taken it to heart. Uh, every now and then I'll get a text message from one of the staff who have read a certain, and I, I've encouraged them to do that. You know, if, you, if you something stumble across that you, you, it pops out at you, that you can relate to our agency, send me a text, you know, write about it, jot it down, because that's what we're going to try to build upon, how we can bring these business concepts into the sheriff's office uh, to take our, our agency to the next level. And, and I'm encouraged by the staff's uh, input. Um, I, I, I find it funny sometimes because the, the book has some interesting humor to it. Um, and it, it is an eye-opener when you, you, you stumble across a chapter that you can definitely relate to an incident that's going on in, in, your, in our environment. But uh, I talked to a couple of friends of mine, too, um, who know the author. Um, I have a couple of business coaches around that I've, that I've worked with, and I chatted to one, uh, one of my coaches who's down in Florida. He says, oh, I know Jim Collins. I've done seminars with him. And, and I, I asked him, I said, do you know if, like, has there ever been a 
public agency that he's worked with to try to, you know, it's all, all these private companies that he's researched. Uh, and to his knowledge, no. And so I, I, I'm trying to stumble across. I'd love to have the author come up and actually address the staff at some point um, in maybe some, some fashion or other. But uh, he, it'd, be, it'd be a good take to see if whether or not we've met the, uh, the standards that he put forth in this book. So I encourage everybody, if you're, if you're into business, if, you're into, if you have a small business that, uh, or, or you're looking to expand, this book actually is a, is a real good read. So that's the summer reading list. If you're like me, I've already read the book, but typically I waited to the last minute before, like literally the weekend before school would start, and I'd cram the whole thing in just so that I'd be ready for day one. But there's plenty of time left. Well, I used to do that, um, <laughs> and I don't anymore. Now, I don't I, encourage that either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I simply, maybe with later in life, I just... I savor the book more, you know. I, yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't wait till that last minute and cram, which uh, my son does. Yeah, He's I tried, eighteen. I so. try to cram The Hobbit one summer in oh a weekend, boy. and that it's was a big. Book. It was a big book, <laughs> and uh, luckily I, there wasn't a quiz the first week of school. <laughs> because if you read things that fast, it doesn't really. Doesn't sink it, and there wasn't. Right? A, there wasn't really the, the the movie out wasn't there, so I had to actually read the book to figure Cliff out. Cliff notes was, weren't there. Cliff notes weren't <laughs> in the mix. I didn't find those till later in life. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sheriff, sure, I want to thank you, as always, for joining us today and uh, talking about all things uh, Norfolk County Sheriff related and, of course, sharing your information with Norfolk County, uh, with the residents out in, uh, well, I'd say TV land, but people see us online. Online, now as everything. Well. It's, it's a beautiful day on their phone. We'll get it done. Yeah. <laughs> you had trouble shutting your phone off. Really. I did. I know. I'm technologically <laughs> challenged myself. I have to get to a great level, too. <laughs> it's because everything changes so quickly. Uh, Continuing education, right? That's what it's all right. about. Keep, right. keep, keep on your education. You know, this is the time of the year. Start thinking about it. Yeah. You know, go back to school. Even going to Quincy College or Stonehill, one of our community colleges around. Fantastic educational opportunities to get involved in. But now's the time to get back in the game. Right. Like the theme. Definitely <laughs> like the theme. Uh, thanks again, and we'll see you next month. Next month. And I want to thank you at home for watching. Please continue to support your local access television station for more programming just like this. Thank you.